What's going on guys? My name is Matt Sheldon. I'm a professional soccer player for the Tulsa Roughnecks. And right now I'm kind of in the phase of improving my stamina, improving my fitness so I can get back to match fitness um, after my sports hernia surgery. So I thought since I'm doing this right now for myself, I would share some of my biggest tips as well as like a week by week guide on how to put these tips into action um, for you guys right now in a video. So uh, let's roll the intro and I'll, I'll give you some of my tips. So before this video even starts, I wanna share one of my biggest beliefs when it comes to training. And that's that your focus as a soccer player should be on technical and tactical development. However, as a supplement, you should also be focusing on your fitness, your strength, and your athleticism. I'm saying this because I don't want any youth players or any younger players to watch this video and then spend all of their free time on improving their fitness and getting as fit as, as possible and just neglect the actual tactical and technical development of their game. Fitness can be lost in, in a matter of weeks. I had a sports hernia surgery. I was out for 10, 12 weeks, and I've lost you know majority of my fitness. However, your technical training with the ball and your tactical IQ is, is with you for the long term. Maybe you might be a little rusty for a week or two, but your technical ability and your tactical IQ does not leave you and will stick with you. So now let's get into my biggest tips on how to improve your stamina. Number one, and the most important tip I have for improving your stamina is you need to incorporate progressive overload into your fitness training. I'm gonna say this again because this is the most important part of this video, progressive overload. Progressive overload is the gradual increase of stress placed upon the body during exercise training, AKA just making your workouts harder over time, AKA taking baby steps aka the theme of become elite and what i preach whether you're doing a time two mile or 400 meter repeats or you're doing full field sprints or you're doing agility work and speed ladder work whatever you do you need to make sure that over time your workouts are getting harder and harder or more intense and more intense so that your stamina actually improves an amazing firsthand example of progressive overload was during my last off season if you guys haven't watched my off season series i did a cardio workout called the john terry cardio workout i highly suggest it linked in the description if you want to check that out but basically it's about doing uh, sets of these sprints and I started out when I first did the workout back in November I think or December I did nine sets only nine sets at 11.2 miles per hour and then over the course of a few weeks I went from nine sets to 11 sets to 13 sets to 15 sets to 16 sets to 20 sets and then I ramped it up from 11.2 miles per hour up to 12 miles per hour and again I dropped back down to around 10 sets and I built that 10 sets up to 20 sets over a course of a again, another few weeks. And over the course of two months, or I think six weeks, I went from doing nine sets at 11.2 miles per hour and struggling with that by, at the end, doing 20 sets at 12 miles per hour. A huge increase, but taking these tiny baby steps along the way. So that's the first tip, and literally the biggest tip. Whatever you do, if whatever cardio workout you do, track your progress and make sure that you're increasing the intensity of the workout over time. Progressive overload. You honestly, you honestly can stop watching the video right now because that is the main point of this. But if you want more tips, then you can stick around, I guess. Number two, train as a soccer player. Understand that soccer is a 90 minute game, but this 90 minute game is broken down into a lot of different types of fitness. You're doing dozens and dozens of short sprints and changes of directions between five and 15 yards. You have a few longer range sprints between 15 and 70 yards when you really go on a run down the field. And you have a lot of periods during the game where you're either walking or jogging as recovery. So in order to really become match fit, your training should replicate those different styles. Whenever I make a stamina program for myself, I really kind of break up the fitness into three different categories. The first category is mid to long distance, but it's not just going out and running seven miles jogging. I like to do like a time two mile or mile runs where it's timed, I can see how fast I'm going, I can progressively overload it every single week and try to run faster and faster and faster, but it's a longer period where you're just running, usually around 80 to 70% of your top speed. The second category is HIT. This is like high intensity interval training and it's really, really good for soccer. It's really, really good for fitness and you can do a 20 minute workout and be absolutely dead after it. But but this workout is kind of like the John Terry cardio workout that I was doing in off season a lot. It's fast, it's intense and you have longer rest periods to really get the heart used to going for periods of sprinting and then periods of rest. And then the third category is kind of also HIT training as well, high intensity intervals, but you're doing uh, agility, more agility 
work, tight space, you're doing shuttle runs, you're doing like X drills, T cone sprints, uh, you're doing shuffling and sprinting and jumping and stuff like that. Agility, change of direction, very, very applicable to soccer, but uh, I just like to kind of keep that separate from the HIIT training. I then make sure my stamina program is doing all three types of these of this fitness. And then I incorporate the first tip, progressive overload, and I make sure that each week my workouts are getting harder and harder and harder. Number three, uh, and this kind of goes back to the beginning of the video, but I try to incorporate ball work when I can. It really doesn't matter how fit you are if you can't play the game, obviously. I mean, it's the same kind of like as, as speed. It doesn't matter how fast you are. If your first touch is absolutely shocking, you need to have, obviously it's good to be faster and fitter, but you really do need to become and focus on becoming a better soccer player in general. Obviously you're not gonna be incorporating the ball work when you do a timed two mile run. Um, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense to me. I think the best time to incorporate ball work is during that third category, the agility work. Um, like if you're doing a shuttle run, maybe go once without the ball. And then after you do that once without the ball, incorporate the ball again and do it again all with the ball. I actually have an amazing example of this type of workout, um, which I did in off season to prepare for, for preseason. And I'll link that in the description as well. But um, again, all agility, all fitness drills, but I incorporated the ball work into that and just kind of killed two birds with one stone. So here is a very, very basic bare bone schedule of how to get fit. It looks simple. It looks too easy almost but I guarantee you this will work. Um, and as you can see, Mondays I'm doing a time two mile on the treadmill to hit that longer range portion of the match fitness. And I'm progressively overloading the workout by decreasing my time with each week. I'm going from 9.6 miles per hour, which is completing the two mile in 12 minutes and 30 seconds. And then on the next Monday, I'm going at 9.8 miles per hour, which would complete the two miles in 12 minutes and 14 seconds. And then the next week at a 10 mile per hour speed. And then the final week at 10.2 miles per hour speed, which eventually would be 11 minutes and 46 seconds. On Wednesdays, I'm doing a simple hit routine of full field sprints to hit that full speed, fast recovery form of cardio. Nothing fancy about it, literally just a full field sprint. But you can obviously see the progressive overload, how I go from the first week of just doing five full field sprints uh, with two minutes of rest in between to the next week going to eight sets and then to 10 sets. And then finally on the final week, you can see that, uh, that we're again doing 10 sets but we're cutting the rest time now from two minutes down to just 90 seconds. That's another form of making that workout more intense, making it harder, progressive overload. It doesn't just have to be adding more sets. You can't just add more sets over and over again. Same with the two mile. Eventually you will reach your plateau, but I guarantee if you guys wanna get fit, you are far, far, far away from your plateau right now. Finally, Fridays hit that third category of that agility and change of direction piece of match fitness. And here we're just doing a very, very simple drills, like a shuttle run, be at the, at the five, 10, 15, and 20 yard line, um, where you go once with the ball and once without. Then there's a T-cone sprint drill with the ball. And then there's an X drill without the ball. And finally you finish with a figure eight drill, again, once with the ball and once without. And as you can see, each week, the workouts are increasing in sets, decreasing in rest time, or a combination of both. And that's it. It's really, honestly, that simple. Sticking to workouts, tracking your progress, and making sure that every single week you're progressing. Those were my three biggest tips and how I would implement it into a four week program. That program that I gave you is very, very bare bones. You can use it, it will work, but if you want a very detailed, different exercises, sets, reps, all improving and, and progressing in, in intensity. I have a great game fit program on my website for just $5, uh, which will be linked in the description if you wanna check that out. You don't need it. I gave you everything in this video that will get you fit. But if you want to follow something day by day, I highly recommend the game fit program. But I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something. Again, progressive overload is the main topic of this video. That's all you truly need in order to get fit. Just progress progress, make the workouts harder. Um, but that's it for the video. Hit the thumbs up button, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. All right, guys. Peace.